And there's been talk of uh, a handful of corrupt and anti-Labour gangsters who have the Tasmanian section of the ALP in their power. There's a Melbourne worth listening to. But the gateway to the city is the ideal place for a wonderful, aesthetically designed city hall for Melbourne. There's a Melbourne worth listening to. Radio, that's always new. I've just had a hot flash. She's going? No, uh, the lady from Burwood with the snake has just rung and her fruiterer heard her appeal and he is at this moment on his hands and knees in the lounge room catching the snake. Oh, isn't that blissful? There's a Melbourne worth listening to 3AW Open line programming on station 3AW in Melbourne is controversial, topical, newsworthy, informative, amusing, sad, serious, but always entertaining. Our current policy for open line programming is based on a careful mixture and balance of news, news comments, information and discussion. Open line commentators are chosen for their ability to communicate with listeners on wide ranging topics on a person to person basis. Careful production control ensures that a high level of topicality, pace and variety is maintained hour by hour, right throughout the broadcast day. Open Line gets underway daily at 7 with the breakfast edition of Power Line, presented by Ormsby Wilkins. Ormsby Wilkins is a highly experienced political and news commentator. Between 7 and 8.30 a.m. daily, he discusses news events and talks with politicians and people making news around Australia and around the world. And there's been talk of uh, a handful of corrupt and anti-Labour gangsters who have the Tasmanian section of the ALP in their power. Let's talk to the expelled member, Mr Hugh Dell, who was formerly Private Secretary to the Tasmanian Premier, Mr Rees, and also served as Private Secretary to the Deputy Premier. Uh, Mr Dell, uh, what is the, the basis of this, of this problem? What's caused the split? Uh, right at the bottom of it is the fact that uh, there's uh, a lot of tired old men in the Tasmanian Labor Party who uh, may have once been honourable servants of the causes of the Labor Party. They have had it. Is this a situation you have seen developing for some time? Yes, it's a situation that I've been aware of for at least two years since I joined the Labor Party to do something about it in 1971. Why were you expelled at the weekend? I was expelled because one member of the state executive is accusing another member of the state executive of... Uh, arranging with uh, money from bookmakers and from uh, mainland gambling interests, particularly Melbourne, um, to pay another member of parliament the figure of $29,000 uh, to vote against the, the previous government in Tasmania. Well, are you and the people who think like you going to ask the federal executive to, to step in and, well, and straighten this matter out? We've done that already. So you believe that the solution uh, lies in the hands of the federal executive or federal conference? Uh, I believe that the uh, answer ultimately uh, rests in the hands of the, of the members of the ALP in Tasmania. But if you've ever been to any of the normal branch meetings of the ALP in Tasmania, you'll realise that they're almost totally sycophant, they're totally spineless, They've accepted in this state for the last 35, 36 years that when that if there's Labor, that the Labor Premier is the God, that he's the father of all his people, that he must not be criticised. Uh, and, uh, and as far as I'm aware, the first time they ever met criticism was when uh, my branch put through a resolution criticising their abysmally bad performance in opposition in Tasmania. It took them about two years to wake up to the fact that they didn't have big cars and refrigerators and flunkies and, you know, they just couldn't accept the, the realities of life that they were in opposition. Well, you obviously feel that the best way to, to, to shift what you would regard as this small junta is to air the, and, and publicise what, what you believe is going on. Exactly, and I'm determined that there'll be a Royal Commission. It's been nothing but underground trouble boiling deals suspicions nastiness and and backbiting and i put it all directly down to the influence of gambling in this state all right mr dell thank you very much for talking to us okay 3aw's second big gun in the open line field norman banks 
Join Zormsby Wilkins at 8.30 every morning for a joint, no-holds-barred discussion on contemporary issues. Between 9 and 10, Ormsby Wilkins takes open line calls and Melbourne listens while Ormsby argues, advises, discusses and informs listeners who do not always agree with his opinions. Well, I'm afraid that you are very, very ignorant of modern history in China. Am I? It's still going on, in case you didn't know. What's still going on? The Cultural Revolution. Well, you're playing with semantics now. No, I'm I am not, Mr. Well, Wilkins. just, just a I moment. Was but in China. I really don't want to argue with you. I just I'm want to explain. Arguing. I just want to explain what I meant when I said the Cultural Revolution had been abandoned. I meant the manner in which they had attempted to implement it by gangs of young men or groups of young men going about in the streets taking charge of the whole community. Uh, that turned out to be not a success, that particular technique. So they changed their technique of what you call the Cultural Revolution to something quite away from that. That is what I meant. I didn't mean that the Cultural Revolution, as you choose to call it, uh, wasn't still going on. I mean, that method of implementing it was most certainly changed. Well, I happened to be in China during the height of the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was there for five years. Yes. And I'm afraid that you are afraid. a person who could get out of jail with the bars up because you can turn anything just to suit yourself. Madam, are you telling me that something that is public common knowledge you know, anybody who knows anything about the cultural revolution that china realized that the encouragement of those gangs of roving cultural revolutionaries uh, was a great mistake and that they didn't alter their course are you telling me that what on earth are you talking about I are you so blind with your ideological prejudice no. that, that you don't know that no i happen to know that in all revolutions there are people who go too far. You know, I was uh, familiar with the uh, kind of uh, dialectical materialist matter that you're discussing at the moment uh, 40 years ago, madam. Yes, when you joined the Communist Party. No, I never joined the Communist Party. You had a lot to do with it. Yes. I just happened to know quite a bit about it. Yes, I, I did. I was, yeah. a, I was a young, eager, anti-establishment person. And I attended lectures on dialectical materialism and I read all the books and I'm as familiar as you are. But you've never seen it in practice. And I became, I became disillusioned with the sort of people who were associated with it. Mr. But Wilson, thank, oh, you I would could. not have the job you have today if you were a very progressive man and up at the time. You well, that's true. It's a sin to... Uh, the AW wouldn't employ you, nor Norman Banks either. Thank you, dear, and I'm grateful for your objective comments. <laughs> Norman Banks, assisted by his girl Friday, Barbara, takes over open line between 10 and noon. It's open line. Good morning to you. Uh, I want to, uh, to ask Norm if you yes. can give me some information for my niece. They have an assignment to do something about Russia or the Soviet, and yes. she's chosen the Orthodox Church. Yes. The Orthodox Church is a a brand of Catholicism, and I use the word Catholicism in its broadest sense. I mean, Norman Banks is Australia's most experienced and respected radio commentator, a world traveller with a wealth of knowledge on a multitude of subjects. 3AW listeners ring Norman for help and guidance, and they get the opportunity to meet newsmakers in the arts, government, sport and community activity. It's open line. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to know the correct pronunciation of the word medicine. Well, look, I'm going to correct you before you go any further. Don't ever say, and I'm sure, inasmuch as you've asked for advice, that you will accept this advice. Yes. The word is not pronunciation, it's pronunciation. Oh. Yes. All right? Yes. Well, now, in Australia, we are quite entitled to say medicine, yes. but the correct, the strictly correct English pronunciation is medicine. Is it? You hear that so often, but my husband said that wasn't right, so... Well, I... well it is right, uh, according to the the high standards of English pronunciation in England, it's medicine. Oh, yes. All right? Oh, good. Thank you very much, All right, dear. Bye-bye. It's a pleasure. Dame Peggy, had you seen uh, the Barshoy Theatre in earlier days when it was a place of such uh, glittering, uh, you know, uh, 
Well, um, I, I had been. Well, I haven't been before the war. No. I have been to the Bolshoi before, but it was ten years ago. Yes, and what's the, the thing is that it, it, it's all been done up now, yes. but it's all been done up in the old style. I mean, it's got the most lovely red plush and gold paint and lovely glass chandeliers. You know, they do maintain all the lovely old glamour. Yes, but what about the dressing of the audience? Oh, the audience was, yes, they don't dress very much. It's a pity, isn't it? Yes, it is a pity, but of course the judges all dressed up. So yes. that we had all the jury people in lovely glamorous gowns, some of them were. And, and where were you seated in the theatre? We were seated in the two front rows of the stall for the, for the um, judging. Yes. And at night we were able to see performances of the Bolshoi company itself every night when we were put in the director's box, which used to be the Tsar's box. Of course. And that was lovely too. Good morning, Mr. Dickey. Good morning, Norman. How are you? Very well, thank you. I was wondering whether you're feeling uh, a little bit down in the dumps as the result of having to cave in to the Commonwealth. Well, I wouldn't say use the term exactly cave in, but uh, if I'm down in the dumps, it's because of the uh, uh, attitude of the Commonwealth Government in uh, coming to an agreement uh, with the states over this proposed housing agreement and uh, uh, the ridiculous uh, situation that has arisen over the past three or four months of the states believing that uh, what the Commonwealth intended to do could only jeopardise uh, uh, the housing future in various states, most certainly in Victoria, and yet the Commonwealth have insisted on a blackmail method, and that has been purely on interest rates, where it will be cheap money if we sign the agreement and dear money if we don't. Thank you so much, Mr Dickey. Right. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Mr Dickey, Minister for Housing in the state of Victoria. What a story. Good morning from Melbourne, Australia to Akron. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? <laughs> well, what time of the day is it there in Akron? Right now it's uh, 8.30 on Monday night. Monday night. Well, I don't know whether you have the same measure of interest in golf there as we have in Australia, but I would imagine that uh, the winning of the championship there by an Australian, Bruce uh, Crampton, would be uh, a matter of interest to all golf enthusiasts, even in Akron. Yes, sir, it is. There's a lot of activity here for golf. Uh, the American Golf Classic just concluded is probably one of the biggest weeks of uh, golf or any sporting event in the Akron area all year long. Would it be known generally that uh, Bruce Crampton is Australian? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's very, very widely known. Throughout the day, 3AW presents regular newscasts on the hour with a major roundup of half-hour news in depth at 12 noon and 6 p.m. in Newscope. At 12.30, Martha Gardner introduces her popular homemaker program, answering and advising listeners on all aspects of a home, family, cooking and gardening. Hello, Martha. Yes. Chicken casserole. Yes. Can I read out what I've got written down and then you can correct me? Can I me? tell you quickly what you should have written down? Yes. I'm just about off to the laundrette with my curtains and there is silk cotton on line. Could you tell me what would be the gentlest thing to buy to wash them in? Mother, I have just had a new off-white shag pile wool carpet put down. I had orange lemonades put on a new white Indian rug. Mother, I've taken down your um, recipe for cleaning baths and tiles. Uh, I was wondering, could you tell me, is there any way to clean a wa white shantung Holland blonde? Having difficulty in making a pound mixed fruit cake. Hello. Hello, Martha. Yes. I was just wondering if you could help me with uh, treating a claret stain. I did put salt down on a um, on a turquoise carpet. Soda water. Have you used soda? No, I didn't try that. Try your soda water. Okay then. Yes. Um, that'll be beautiful. Good. Good. Thank you. Hello. Hello? Yes. Martha, I have um, some rather beautiful poinsettias growing in my garden. Yes. And um, I want to pick some for the house for the weekend. And yes. I'm just wondering the best way to uh, treat them. And should I pick them, you know, noon, morning, well, look, or late, or what? At the moment, I don't think it would matter a tuppenny scrap. <laughs> The mood and tempo of open line programming lightens from 1.30 in the afternoon when Peter James and Billy combine music, conversation and open line comments on any and every subject under the sun. Hello. Yes. Billy and Pete. Yes. Uh, Pete, can I say, Billy, that I adore you? Oh, oh, sure. there. oh that, that's done. Uh, practically everything yesterday I was all with you. I could have killed everybody else. Oh, that's done her a lot of good on a Friday. Have you ever been discriminated against because you're a woman? Oh, constantly, constantly. Not in here, you haven't. Of course I am. Not in this show, you haven't. Oh, you've got to be joking. You have, nev you have never been discriminated against here. I am considered to be a dill. 
We have, we usually draw one subject today, we've got three, three in one foul swoop. Have you been discriminated against as a woman? Uh, what every young man should know. And my dream came true. Any of those subjects on 3297522. Hello. Um, I want to talk about what every young man should know. What yes. do you think they should know? I think he should know how to handle women. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by handle women, please? I don't mean physically. Oh, I see. <laughs> now, I, I find that my boys haven't got any sisters. And when they first go out and start taking young women out, um, they're a bit bewildered, you know, they don't know how to cope with temperaments and things. Yeah, that's, yeah. So. Well, of course, it takes some men a lifetime to discover that, and some men never do. Um, oh, mine have gradually learned as they've gone along. Still, uh, this is what happens, but I take your point. The fact is that, um, I think this is one of the good things about co-educational schools. Mm. The boys and girls go and mix together in school life. And I think this gives both boys and girls a, a much uh, greater knowledge of the whims and the fancies of the opposite sex and how to cope with them. And I suppose the main thing is to be natural with them. Hello. Billy, hello, Peter. How are you? Um, very well, thank you. Good. I think all women are being discriminated against at the moment. Oh, mm. dear. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you for why. The uh, national wage uh, increase that every, or most men got, I shouldn't say every because mine didn't get it, but most men got this wage increase mm. but the women who are providing the food that the the price went up for don't get this rise unless you've got a very generous husband that's right mm -hmm. well what do you think about it billy oh well um i see your point that uh, it's a long hard struggle for the housewife but uh, really uh, common sense tells us that the man gets um a rise but the cost of food has gone up, so he never enjoys it. But this is the this is not discrimination against women, of course. It's discrimination against the worker. Still in a light-hearted mood at 4:30, listeners join Peter James and Mary Hardy for an hour and a half of radio programming at its funniest and most entertaining. Nothing is sacred when Peter and the irrepressible Mary Hardy get together and their listeners join in the fun. You'd be too scared to be a bike in Ballarat. I wouldn't be scared to be a bike. Of course you would. You had your mug hanging, your pannikin hanging by a thing in your name on your hanky. What point would you do with a leather jacket? That was when I was a little boy and went to a picnic. I had to get me raspberry and a pannikin. So <laughs> my mum pinned the pannikin on me thing so I wouldn't lose it. Yes. I had my name on so You really must me. have been stupid. I rang last in the race because I wouldn't run through the cows. Of course so you didn't. That was your I ran scene. round. On 32975. Double two, it's open slather. You can talk about what you like. All right. Please ring up today because we've got these people sitting what? in here watching us, and if nothing happens, we will feel absolutely oh. terrible. I'll get depressed, and I'll probably well, anything could happen. I'll hit myself with this biro. Hello. Hello, Mary and Pete. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, could somebody pass me phone and, and help me with a heck one heck of a big problem here? Oh yes. Uh, my son goes to high school and he's doing barbecue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the moment, and last night he brought home a green tree snake. Oh. No, it's funny. And Mary, I was hoovering, yeah. and I had broken the glass that it was in, and the ruddy thing's in my lounge. <laughs> oh, I don't think it will hurt you. We'll oh, have to wait. Mary, a... I am terrified. I know. Well, Mary. have you locked all the doors? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm in the kitchen with the phone. I've got the both lounge doors locked. My yeah. son won't be home till nine tonight. My oh. husband won't be home. He's working back. And Mary, I... I like sitting in the lounge watching 96 and everything, but I don't know whether it's under the seat or, or gone under my oil heater even. I wouldn't have a clue. No. I tell now, you what, what is it again? Uh, what's a green snake? tree snake. They don't mm. bite or don't, but oh, I'm not going to pick no, it up. No, neither would I know. Don't touch it. Green tree snake. Well, look, yeah. we'll try and uh, we'll get someone to ring in. I mean, if it wriggles out, what do I do? Now, listen, what, what, where, where do you live? Pardon? Where do you live? At Burwood. At Burwood. Burwood. <laughs> I wonder if there's any brave people in the street. Do you know any brave people near you? Well, it's only the women home. The only moment. the women yeah. home. And my girlfriend won't come in. Look, before you go, um, I'll tell you what you can do. We had a similar case to this some time back where some, the people had something under, they thought a snake under their house. Mm. The it's zoology inside. department of any of the universities, if you ring them, oh. they will send a, a, they're very good at this, they'll send someone out straight away, usually. Oh, fine. Oh, well, you that's a give good it a go, idea, but I thought we'll someone local. Yeah. Yes. I was going to sort of try and hit it with the broom, but I thought, oh, oh no, don't, don't do that. No, you'll only, you'll only antagonise. No, leave it. It'll stay near the heat. Oh, isn't that? Well, we've got all this drama in our lives. I'll tell you what. Think of that, girls. You could have a green tree snake running around your house, but it'll mm. probably stay. It'll stay in the room where the heat is mostly. It, well, it could hardly get out of a lounge room anyway. Oh, it could slide under a door. Depends. Well, don't Snakes say that. The ladies slippery. listening. No, on the I radio. know she's having a fit. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Newsmakers follows the 6 p.m. edition of Newscope. In Newsmakers, I, John Worthy, look back at the news of the day and talk with the people who made news. Very excited and thrilled to be back home, so uh, um, I haven't managed to get any rest yet. All right, you're quoted as saying that uh, the French government was embarrassed. Tell us about that. Yes, the French government was embarrassed. Um, the, the, one of the Gaullist members that we saw uh, in the government said that uh, we had embarrassed the government and we feel this is probably by uh, being non-political, the non-political representation we have in our simplicity. The Gaullist party is in opposition to Pompidou's party, is it? No, the Gaullists are really in Pompidou's. They're the ones that are in, in office. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, did you speak to the opposition there at all? Yes, uh, we did, and they don't seem to be very well informed. Well, now, you're talking about um, uh, government matters that the people aren't expected to know about or, or shouldn't know about in the eyes of the government, not just the test programme, all matters. Is that what you're saying? Right, yes, well, when that Senator Murphy went over, uh, he was only given five seconds on television. Uh, were you still in Paris when the uh, International Court's decision was handed down? No, we were in London, so subsequently we wrote a letter to Mr Heath. Uh, in London, um, requesting that we oh, that some action be taken. Did you get any assurance that Mr. Heath would act on that letter? Well, no, we had no assurance. It was presented at 10 Downing Street, and uh, we did go to a debate in the House of Commons there, uh, where members of the opposition raised the question about um, uh, the English government uh, backing uh, countries like uh, Australia and New Zealand, and Mr. Heath replied that the respective governments have made their own representation. You've spent a month there in Paris and in London. Uh, the French government admitted that they were embarrassed by you and they'd rather be criticised by men and you've done a lot to, to publicise the letters and telegrams and uh, your own case. But in the long run, what's come out of it all? Yes, well, in the first place, I'll have to make a correction there. The French, the French government admitted to being embarrassed by being approached by two women they were caught off their guard, if you understand. Uh, but I mean, I feel that they didn't quite know how to cope with women and babies. So that our appeal was in our simplicity and not being uh, belonging to any political body. Between 7 and 9.30 p.m., 3AW plays beautiful music, followed by Nightline with Alex Kenworthy. Alex is a minister of religion. His program enjoys top rating and he offers a friendly voice, advice and help to an ever-increasing audience of nighttime radio listeners. Good evening to you. And um, I mean about my daughter. She's not keeping up with her school. Uh-huh. And um, I've had her examined by a psychology and guidance consultant. Yes. And, you know, she's, she's not up to it. What about what age? Oh, she's seven and a half. Yes. And, um... She's just not able to cope with the work at all. No. Have you been in touch with the education department? No, I haven't, because she's in a private school. Yes, but uh, it's just that if it comes to the matter of... Uh, you have mentioned uh, um, a special private school, but um, I wonder whether perhaps it may be possible to uh, look for some placement then at another school that would come under the government system. Would you telephone the education department and talk to them about it? And if you're not getting anywhere, well, by all means, come back at me and I'll see what I can do further to help. Okay? Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. calling. Bye. Well, I get a lot of pleasure and a lot of comfort at listening to you. I'm very, very lonely. Well. I lost my husband a year, over a year ago now. Yes. Two people tell me time heals, but they don't say how much time. Now, I know that yeah. uh, sometimes the situation can go on. Very often... It goes on a long time because... Uh, a long time from it, because I was married 50 years yes. last October. And, well, so that it's natural to expect that something that uh, deepens over 50 years, you can't dismiss in a year, can you? And so I, I, I think I've that recently lost a son-in-law. Oh, well. very, very great comfort to me. Yes. But he just died suddenly. Yes. That's a difficult one. I have been tempted to ring you very yes. often, but I knew I'd break down and cry, so I thought I'd leave it. And then I, when I saw you tonight, I thought I'd just not. Well, I'm glad. And I'm so, so very pleased to see you. Um, well, you'll phone me again if there's anything I can do particularly, or if you feel like yes, when you... Yes, I'm all alone here, and I haven't uh, hmm. got... I've got friends, but they're right out of the... You know, right yes. away from my reach. I have children. When you... Uh, 
feel a bit better if you'd like to uh, come in and talk to me. Oh, I'd love well, to. by all means, do that, won't you? And I'll Where see what. Come to. Oh well, um, uh, it's just a matter of getting in touch uh, with my office and making an appointment. Oh, if um, uh, if you'd like to do that when you're a bit better, I'll, I'll, I'll oh, pass. I won't be sick long. It's just that this warm got right. me, and I just thought I'd better stay in bed and keep warm. Yes, so let I'll me think. pass you back to Marie, and uh, she'll just mention the arrangements to you, so that well, thank uh, you very when much. you feel like it, you God can bless you. you can do it. Thanks for calling. I'm a bit concerned about it. A, a late a girl. Um, she was very knocked down this afternoon. Her name is Kathy Tardy, and she's laying in the Royal Melbourne Hospital this evening, very gravely ill. Yes. I wanted to say a prayer for her. Well, of course. But I'm certainly glad to uh, say a sentence prayer for her. Uh, Lord, we think of uh, the friends who must be concerned for Kathy at this time, and we are thankful that we have this opportunity of prayer when the situation seems to be so difficult and so uncertain, and yet we ask that you'll be near and that your presence by your Spirit may be the experience of all who wait and who are concerned at this time. But particularly we ask that you'll be near to uh, the one who's been mentioned, Kathy, and we ask that you'll restore her and grant her healing power. Nightline finishes at midnight, and from then till open line programs resume at 7 a.m., 3AW plays music. <laughs> Open line programs on 3AW are geared to suit the composition and preferences of the available listening audience and the time of day. Open line programs on 3AW provide a forum for public opinion. It is the people who make the programs, create the variety, maintain the topicality. The commentators skillfully control the pace and provide the authority and knowledge for successful people-to-people -people communication. All of these elements, plus close production control, provide highly professional radio entertainment and ensure the success of open line programs on 3AW and prove that There's a Melbourne worth listening to 3AW